what's your takeaway from what you've learned and how have you applied it to your life to maybe make you uh, a better version of yourself today and going forward? When I started writing the book, I think I thought I would walk away with like a BuzzFeed article type of like, here's the top 10 things to deal with your trauma and rise from the ashes and everything will be great and dandy. Um, but what I've discovered is while there are those insights, absolutely, and there are things that we can do through this time, but it's that it takes time. It takes time for these things to marinate and grief and trauma are not linear. And so some, it, sometimes it can look like a spiral staircase, right? And you might need to look over on this angle and then build up a few more pieces there. Or you might have to go back down and glue down the, the squeaky floorboard on the stair below you. And that is okay. And I think in my own challenges that I'm going through right now, I haven't given myself that time. I just want to skip right through the grief and get to all of the great post-traumatic growth part. <laughs> but that's not how this works. And we have to give ourselves that grace and that space to grow. And I'm not perfect at it. <laughs> I'm still learning in this way. But I think I'm able to wake up each morning and say, you know what? I'm at this point in my grief journey. And that is an okay place to be. And we're just going to keep walking through it. Um, I think there's a, a Winston Churchill quote. It's like, um, if you're in in hell, don't stop. You know, it's like, why would you stop? You know, I have keep no going. choice, but right. Just keep going. Get out of there. Don't stay in hell. <laughs> and so that's what I just have to remember. It's not always going to be like this. It's okay. Where I'm at is okay, but we're going to keep going and we're going to get through it. And I will, I will piggyback off of that when, it, when you mentioned that um, finding the time to um, go through the grief and, and stuff like that, right? And I was speaking to someone about this very topic, and they mentioned that sometimes what they found in their personal experience and their personal journey as we're talking about that is that when they prevent, them, when they prevent themselves from finding the time to deal with maybe the grief or the anxiety or some of the issues they went through, it was their way of not acknowledging it because at that point in time, they didn't have an answer or solution for it. Mm -hmm. Is that how you're feeling with um, why you're not giving yourself the time? Because it seems like you have a lot on the go and you just talking to you, very organized in your thoughts. But is that maybe the reason why you haven't given the time? Because you're like, I have this situation, but I don't know if I have the answer yet. So let me... Mm -hmm put it to the side Pause. and come back to it. That's interesting. Um, I, I think I'll need some time to noodle on it um, to see, but I, I'll be, I'll have to come back to you and tell you. I think for me, one of the bigger challenges I have is that I hold myself to a certain standard and way of things. And for a long time, I have been told that I am a certain thing. I am constantly told Peyton, you're such a positive person. Um, I think even when I'm telling people about something challenging I'm going through, I'm usually smiling, which makes them believe like, she's not actually upset about this. She's fine. Um, and I've taken pride in being the positive person to a fault. And so when people say you're the positive person, I've tried to fit myself into this positive person box when Peyton really is much larger than the positive person box. I am sad, I am happy, I'm excited, I'm scared, just like every other human being. But because I've been labeled in this way and allowed that to impact myself, I don't give myself space to feel any of those things. And so I constantly wanna push them out and say, and make judgments about how I'm feeling or dealing with where I'm at. Um, and so once I realized that, no, no, there's more to me than the, the positive box, um, I think I was able to really stretch my wings literally <laughs> and, um, and get myself out of that mindset and give myself permission to feel everything that I'm feeling. 
And what I call that, um, because I'm very similar, like high energy, having a good time, I call that the burden of positivity. And the yeah. reason why I call it that is that when you're, when you are that positive, happy, bouncing off the walls person, <laughs> and your friends get, to, and the people around you know you as such, they don't expect you to feel any other way. Mm -hmm. Right. You can be having because they come to you for that energy. They yeah. come to you for that smile. They come for you. They come to you for comfort. And sometimes the people who are like you and I, sometimes we hurt much more than other people because we don't know if we have the capability to go to someone and say, hey, I just don't feel like myself today because of this because in the back of our mind we're probably thinking i go to someone with my problem are they going to think it's serious enough because i'm always happy right right, right. or am i letting them down right am i letting them down because they need me to be the positive person exactly is that a bird is that i don't want to call it, I, I call it a burden but is that something that you go through where you have that weight on your shoulders saying that you know what I don't even know if I could afford to not have a happy day because everyone is looking to me for that yeah. source of happiness yeah I I feel that a lot um especially at work now that we're all working from home in a pandemic um at the beginning of the pandemic every all of the the fun um activities I would do with the team, team building, it sort of fell to the wayside, right? Um, we all were like, we have to do all these things and fix the pandemic, you know, as if we're going to do that on our own. But, um, you know, we really tried to get as much work done as we could. Um, and now, you know, we're like, okay, well, we're still working from home here and everybody is dealing with all of their challenges and, you know, they're right at your doorstep because you're working from home. Um, and people started coming up, you know, to my virtual doorstep and saying, hey, like, are you going to start doing more of that fun stuff you used to do? And, you know, you're going to come on camera so we can see your smiling face. And while I'm honored and touched that, you know, they, they look to me as that, um, sometimes I can't put my camera on because I, I need to feel what I'm feeling. And that could be a distraction to what we're doing um, on the call. And, uh, you know, they deserve that space to deal with what they're dealing with in this time. And so do I. And, and so you're right. It does feel like a burden sometimes to, to carry that label. Um, and oftentimes we're designed as care, the caretakers too, right? We want to help others and take care of others. Well, what about us when we need to be taken care of? And so um, it often does get neglected.